Imagine driving a car with only the wheels on the left-hand side of the car working. We wouldn't go anywhere and we'd just travel around in circles all day. The same problem can happen on aircraft with multiple engines. If one of those engines was to fail, although we wouldn't travel around in circles, it can lead to some pretty bad situations. So how do we minimize the risk when we fly with one engine or fly asymmetrically? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to class 19 in the Principles of Flight series. Today we're going to be looking at the consequences of flying with an engine failure on multi-engine aircraft. This leads to an unequal amount of thrust on either side and controlling it is essential to maintain the safe conduct of that flight. When you're learning to fly multi-engine aircraft, you'll spend a whole bunch of time learning to fly with one of those engines failed, from maneuvers such as engine failure after takeoff, single engine landing and single engine go-arounds. A good understanding of this theoretical side will help greatly when you have to practice those maneuvers over and over again in the actual flight lessons. The initial tendency of an aircraft flying asymmetrically is for it to yaw towards the dead engine. The reasons behind this are pretty straightforward. Basically, the engine that has failed will not produce any thrust and the one that is still live will continue to produce thrust. This creates a yawing moment around the center of gravity and in this case here, it'll yaw us to the left AKA it yaws us towards the dead engine. In propeller driven aircraft, a windmilling propeller will also create an additional drag force, which adds to this overall yawing moment. That is until the windmilling propeller has been feathered to reduce the amount of drag. The strength of the yawing moment is dependent on the same things as all moments are. So a moment is equal to the force times the distance. So if you have a larger force, you're going to yaw more, and if you have engines that are further away from the center of gravity, you're again going to yaw more. So on something like a private jet, like a G650, the engines are tail mounted, so they're not going to be that far away in terms of distance from the center of gravity, but something uh, like an A350 where the engines are quite far out, then you get a very severe problem. So as we yaw towards the failed engine, the wing on the live side travels through the air faster and therefore produces more lift. And that leads to a secondary effect of also rolling towards the dead engine as well. So if you don't resolve this problem quickly, it can get worse and worse and you can keep rolling, and keep yawing and eventually lead to spinning, which as we know is a very undesirable state. To restore the aircraft back to the normal position, we have to create a counter moment. The first way to do this is through using the rudder. We basically apply the rudder in order to create an opposite moment and we press it towards the live engine. So in this case, we're pressing it down to the right, which would deflect it over this way. And that creates a force in this direction. And that force rotates around the center of gravity and creates this restoring moment. The disadvantage of deflecting the rudder is you increase the frontal area, you increase the parasite drag, and it's actually quite significant, so you need a lot more thrust to overcome this deflected rudder position. The problem arises because we're already an engine down, so we're limited on how much thrust we can use. Therefore, when designers design a plane, they have to make sure that one engine can handle this increase in thrust when we are one engine down. Another method to use is to use the banking method, which is a bit stranger because we don't fly with wings level. You essentially use the bank of the aircraft to make the lift come off at this angle, but we'll just call it the force because lift acts straight up. We then use this other force to help control the yaw and the bank. This banking method won't be sufficient on its own, so it's a supplemental technique to use as well as the rudder method. And that means that we can deflect the rudder a bit less and means we have less of a drag to overcome. That means we have more available thrust on the engine. We can achieve better performance when we're flying. The critical engine is the engine that if it were to fail, would cause the most control problems. 
usually during takeoff, because this is the part when we have the most amount of thrust and we're going the slowest speed. In a twin propeller driven aircraft, the engine on the left is the critical one. This is because of the asymmetric blade effect when we're at high angles of attack. The asymmetric blade effect or the P factor means that the thrust of the propeller is pushed off to the right as so. This means that the balance arm for the engines is different. The balance arm on the right hand engine is much longer. So therefore the moment created by this propeller is much stronger. So a failure of the left engine means we have a stronger moment coming from the right engine than if it was the other way around. If the right engine fails, we put a moment which is this force times this distance. And if the left engine fails, we have a force, sorry, a moment which is this force times this distance. That means we have to put in more rudder to correct the problem and it's more drag and it reduces our performance. So in a propeller twin, or sorry, a twin propeller aircraft, left engine is a critical one. In a jet aircraft, the critical engine only exists in crosswind conditions. The engine that is on the same side as the wind is the critical engine. This is because the aircraft's fin at the back will naturally want to weather cock us into the wind. That's the stability element of the fin doing its job. The wind comes in at an angle, creates this angle of attack in here, that creates the force out this direction and a yaw into the wind. If our upwind engine was to fail, we then have the combined effects of our asymmetric flight as well as this weather cocking motion. So if the right engine fails in this case, the upwind engine is going to cause a lot more control problems than if the left engine fails. If the left engine was to fail, it would actually probably help keep us on the straight and narrow. On four engine aircraft, the further out engines are going to be the critical ones, simply down to that longer balance arm. And if you combine it with the wind, it's going to be the most upwind of the engines, essentially. The rudder generates a force using the equation force is equal to half rho v squared SCL. This means at slow speeds, the force is also quite low. During takeoff, we apply maximum thrust pretty much on the engines. So this is the worst possible time to lose an engine due to the strength of the moment being at its strongest. If we're traveling at slow speed, we may not also be able to generate sufficient force from the rudder and the fin to counteract this max strength moment. Obviously not a very desirable situation. So we have a limit on how slow we can fly during takeoff. This is called VMCA speed for minimum control whilst airborne. This is the minimum speed where we're still able to generate enough force in the tail to generate that counteracting moment. It's specific to that day's conditions because factors such as altitude, density and temperature can all have an effect on our maximum thrust output. Again, something that will be looked at a bit more in the performance class. Before we take off, we also have to be able to control the asymmetric yaw while on the ground. This is where we get VMCG, speed for minimum control on the ground. It's a bit different to VMCA, but not that much. So on the ground, the yawing of the aircraft doesn't happen around the center of gravity because we have the wheels on the ground. So it happens around the wheels. Our center of gravity is normally located further forward than our main wheels. So our balance arm for our corrected moment from the tail is a lot shorter. We therefore need to generate more force to achieve the same strength of corrected moment. To generate this stronger force, we have to travel faster. And that means that VMCG is larger than VMCA, it's a higher speed. The final control speed is the one we use on landing and approach, or more specifically, the go around. When we do a go around, we have a similar picture to when we take off, relatively low speed and high thrust. We therefore have a minimum speed to be able to maintain directional control in case of a failed engine. We then fly above this speed the whole way down the approach and landing, so we are ready at any point to go for a go around. This speed is called VMCL, speed for minimum control on landing.
It's important to note that all of these speeds are determined at the worst possible conditions. So it's considering the critical engine has failed, the center of gravity is at the rear limit, meaning the balance arm is short, we're at maximum weight, so we have to be using maximum thrust, which will cause the biggest strength of moment. Uh, windmilling propeller in the case of a uh, propeller-driven aircraft. And with two speeds, the VMCA and VMCL, they also allow a five degree bank angle to help with the directional control, that method that we saw earlier on. To summarize then, if we have one engine fail and we're flying asymmetrically, all the thrust is coming from one side and it causes the aircraft to yaw around the center of gravity. In a propeller driven aircraft, if you have a windmilling propeller, it adds to the drag and makes this problem worse. Because the wing on the same size as the side as the live engine is traveling faster through the air, it produces more lift and that causes a banking motion of roll towards the dead engine as well. To correct this, we use the rudder we step on the live engine. So in this case here, we're deflecting the rudder to the right. That generates a force out to the left and that creates this corrective moment. The disadvantage is you now have this deflected rudder, which is creating a lot more drag. You need to overcome that with thrust and you're already an engine down, so your performance goes down quite a lot. To supplement this technique, you can use the banking method where you roll the wing towards the live engine and you use a horizontal component of the lift force to help with your directional control. The critical engine on a twin propeller aircraft is the left engine. That's with right hand or clockwise rotating propellers. Because of the asymmetric blade effect or the P factor, it means that the distribution of thrust is off to the right of the propellers. And because of this, the balance arm for the right-hand engine is longer and the balance arm for the left is shorter. So if this engine was to fail, you've got a much stronger moment because you've got a longer distance times force than if this were to fail because you've only got this small distance times this force. The critical engine on a jet engine only exists with crosswind conditions and it's the upwind engine, it's the most upwind engine. What happens is the fin does its job and it corrects us into the wind because of the angle created, generates a force. If you then had the upwind engine fail as well, you'd get this combined force of the asymmetry that would make the control problems a lot worse. If the left engine failed, you would actually get a bit of help with this correction. You'd be easier to maintain your directional control. Some minimum speeds are required to maintain directional control because the fin and the rudder are only of a fixed size and if we apply maximum thrust and then we have an engine fail, we need to be able to generate enough force from the tail and the rudder, sorry, the fin and the rudder to correct our motion and make straighten us up and maintain directional control. There's three speeds. VMCA is for when we're in the air. VMCG is when we're on the ground. It's different to VMCA because we rotate around the wheels rather than the center of gravity. It means our balance arm is shorter. So therefore VMCG has to be bigger than VMCA. The last one is VMCL, speed for minimum control on landing. It's actually to do with the go around because we need to be able to control our direction when applying maximum thrust when already flying at slow speeds. All these speeds are done for the worst possible conditions. Critical engines failing, aft C of G, so our balance arms are shorter. And the ones while we're in the air, the VMCA and the VMCL, also allow for this bank ankle method to be used, only up to the five degree limit though.